Good afternoon, everyone. This is Leslie Pope of the Beat Smith coming to you on uh, the eve of Christmas Eve Eve. Wishing everybody a happy holiday. Um, have a very quick project today. Um, last Facebook Live uh, for 2021. So I wanted to do something fast. And um, today we're doing the uh, Pebble Beaded Bead with uh, Nibbits and rulers and they look like little like donuts or as i am going to call the earrings that i'm getting ready to show you um flying saucers <laughs> it looks like a little flying saucer but of course you can make bracelets and all kinds of other things. And, um, you know, Team Leslie, Leslie Rogowski and I, we love component pieces because you can do all kinds of fun things with them once you learn how to make the component. And this is definitely a fast one. It doesn't take a lot of beads. It takes a few nib bits. One of my favorite two hole shaped beads, some rulers, and a few 15s. I'm using a six pound fire line and a size 11 needle. And I've got my little snips here. And for other people, if you don't necessarily like to use the snips, got my trusty dusty thread zapper, which I also like a lot. So let's get started so everybody can head off onto, the <laughs> onto more plans for their holiday. And this is really fast. So the first step is you're going to take a nib bit and you're going to sew through the tip end. And remember, before you start, check all your two hole beads to make sure that the holes are clear. So when you go around for your next round, you won't have a stuck hole. I have checked all these beads before we start it. So I won't do something silly like have a stuck, <laughs> a stuck bead. Okay, so it's at three, so four, so one more nib bit and one more ruler. And then you're going to slide them down and tie an overhand knot with the tail. So you make a circle. There we go. And then Sew through all your beads again. Little thread security there never hurts, right? So you're going to sew through all the nib bits. And I'm not in frame. Oh. Okay. All right. You need to mute, Leslie. I can hear you. Okay, and then you're going to go through your first ruler. My frame area is so small, it's driving me crazy. And then sew back through your open hole. And I'm going to put this one aside because I don't want to deal with the tail thread. And I'm going to pick up my pre-done my pre-done one so to get your second row you want to stand your rulers up 
like little statues because then you're going to add your second nibbit. So you're going to do the same thing. You're going to pick up a nibbit through the narrow end and sew through the open hole of your next ruler. And they're going to sit on top of each other. There we go. Like little pieces of candy corn. And we're going to put the next nibbit on. Go through the next ruler. Come on. Come on. There we go. This there. So it's a little, little jinky hinky at the moment until you start connecting them at the top. So you just sort of have to wiggle them around to keep them in place. And there we go. Do the last nib bit. I'm going to go through one ruler and another nib bit just to firm it up a little bit. And then you're going to go through the wide end of your nib bit. So does that make sense to everybody? It looks like a little fan. And to put your top and last row on, you're going to pick up a ruler and a 15 and another ruler and sew through your next nib bit. So the rulers are going to sit in between your nib bits. And so we're going to do that again. A ruler 15 and another nib bit. Sorry, sorry, ruler. And go through the next nib bit. And the third time, ruler 15. Come on, baby. There we go. Your next ruler, go to the next nib bit. I said this was really fast, didn't I? And the last one, your last ruler, your last 15, one more ruler, and go through the nib bit, the ruler, the 15. And the next ruler, make sure that they're laying with their holes matching. And of course, then you're going to go th in the opposite direction through that ruler. And now we're just going to add 15s in between all the rulers. Go through your nib bit. So now you can see that you have your 15s in between your rulers. So we're going to go through the next set of rulers, pick up one more 15, go through that ruler and your next nib bit. That's number two, number three, one more 15. Go through the ruler, go through your nib bit, and here's our, our last set of rulers here. One more 15. And there you go. Whoops. Nope. Drop my needle. And then you're going to have to sew through your first ruler to connect the sides. And voila, a pebble beaded bead. So, of course, I would sew through a few of my beads and tie it off. And then your beaded bead is done. So then you can make one, two, five, ten. Make a bracelet, 
or whatever you would like. And there you go. And wow, that was like 10 minutes. I feel like I'm jipping you guys. And I didn't even do any fancy footwork on this one. But there you go. So another little stash buster. You could do, uh, if you only have a certain color of one thing and a bunch of colors of rulers, you can make like multicolor beads or whatever you would like. Um, and that's why we like component beads. Ta-da! So, 2020 has coming to a close. It's been a fabulous year for me, which is kind of strange considering what's going on. Um, but everyone at the Beadsmith, which is all of our beaters out there, happy holidays, a happy new year. Stay safe. And remember that you can find all these lovely beads and Beadsmith products and supplies at your favorite bead reseller. And if you can support them, please do. They need your support. Um, they love you and we love you. We want you to all stay safe and remember we love beads. Have a wonderful holiday, everybody. Bye.